Wouldn't you agree that vanilla Minecraft sometimes lacks some challenges? Yeah, sure, we've been getting a new boss every seventh update or so, but what if we could spice it up a little bit? You know, have some real challenges and rewards added to the game. Let's do exactly that by taking a look at Legendary Monsters. Legendary Monsters is a 120 forage mod that adds nine new challenging mobs to the game. And each of them is worth fighting as they drop some unique rewards, be it weapons, resources, or armor. To find these beasts, we must visit their structures throughout the land. Let's start in the overworld and hunt the first two legendary monsters. The Overgrown Colossus. Deep in the jungles of Minecraftia, you will sometimes find ancient temples, one of which is inhabited by a long-forgotten construct of a bygone civilization. I'm talking about the Overgrown Colossus. This is a fierce opponent, and with his mighty slam attack, he will knock you back a few blocks and infect you with some nasty poison. So be sure to take some milk with you, just in case. And sure, you can try to stay away from him, but you really think those puny arrows are gonna harm this giant? Of course not, but even though the fight is tough, Defeating the Overgrown Colossus will grant you a nature crystal, a price worth having. Because this nifty little gem is used to either make the mossy chestplate, giving you poison protection and some pretty good armor stats, or you can make the mossy hammer. Quite a worthwhile investment. It has the mossy earthquake ability. Right-clicking near a mob will unleash a mighty earthquake, damaging all mobs around it in a certain radius. And if you have bone meal in your inventory, it even spreads some moss around. Alternatively, it can also be used as a pickaxe. Pretty cool. And what's also pretty cool is our next mob, found in the icy cold. The Frostbitten Golem. The Frostbitten Golem is found in the Frostbitten Temple instead of icy and cold biomes. When visiting this boss, you better put on multiple layers, not only because you can be freezing, but also because you're gonna take a punch. And those punches are nasty. They will give you the freeze effect, which is a new effect added by the mod. It's basically like you being inside of powdered snow. It's gonna make you slow and ice cold. Similar to the Colossus, arrows won't do anything against this golem, but maybe fire can help. Other than that, try to stay out of the golem's range and you're sure to beat him. Upon defeating the golem, you're granted a frozen ruin. This special item is used to either make the Great Frost a legendary sword, giving you a 25% chance of freezing an enemy on attack, or you can make the Frostbitten Shield. This will freeze an enemy for 3 seconds when you're blocking an attack with that shield. Now those are some pretty useful items, but that's all we can find in the overworld. For our next bosses and mobs, you have to go dimension hopping, so we'll start by going to the nether. The Skeletosaurus. The Skeletosaurus is a prehistoric creature awoken again by weird nether magics. Even though it has no stomach, it hungers forever and will bite you when you come too close to its nest. And this time, bow and arrow are finally a viable strategy to defeat this legendary monster. But it's going to take a lot until it's downed. And once you have slain the beast, you are rewarded with two dinosaur bones. You can craft those into either a dinosaur bone shield, which has extreme durability, or you can craft a dinosaur bone club. This is a mighty weapon that allows you to slow down your enemies on a critical hit. The Lava Eater. The Lava Eater is a basalt-based lizard creature that, well, eats lava. Its bite is hot. And when I say that, I mean you better pack in some fire resistance potions when fighting this monster. Even though this is a fiery and a hard fight, once you've beaten the Lava Eater, you are rewarded with three pieces of its skin. The foul epidermis of this creature can then be used to create the Fiery Jaw, a legendary weapon, similar to the Mossy Hammer, but a little bit more uh, fiery. On attacking with it, it has a chance to set enemies on fire. However, the real ability is its fiery shockwave. It unleashes an AoE attack within three blocks of the player, pushing entities away and igniting them for four seconds. The shockwave also has an awesome particle effect. The Withered Abomination. This horrible monster can be found in the Soul Fortress remains strewn around the nether. Encountering them is a dangerous endeavor. The Abomination will attack you with a vicious slam attack, giving you Wither 3. Yes, this legendary monster is not to be messed with. Luckily though, this behemoth is attackable via range using a bow and arrow. This might be your best shot at slaying this legendary monster. And doing so will grant you some great rewards. Namely, you will get Withered Bones, which are used to either craft the Withered Scythe or the Withered Ribcage. The Withered Scythe is not only really awesome looking, it also has a 25% chance of afflicting Wither to your enemies. Whereas the Wither Ribcage actually gives you anti-Wither abilities, meaning you are now immune to the Wither effect. And it's almost as good as a Diamond Chestplate. Definitely worth getting, especially if you want to hunt some Wither Skeletons. But we're not here for Skeletons, we're here for Fungus. 
the warp funguses. This fungus seems kind of sus. So if you're ever walking through the warp forest, keep an eye out for the fungus's nest. Because this legendary monster will decimate you if you're not careful. Given its cries, it seems to be related to an enderman, but infested with fungus. The relations become apparent because this monster will teleport around while fighting. And be careful around lava because its headbutt will knock you back quite a few blocks. But if you stay determined, you will be able to beat the warp funguses. And you shall be rewarded with a mushroom cap part. And four of which are used to make the entity warper. This is a pretty unique item that will teleport all mobs in a four block radius towards the player. It's Probably situationally useful, but I do have a hard time imagining what I can do with four blocks of teleporting. Regardless though, teleporting we must, because to see the last three mobs, we must visit the end. The Shulker Mimic. To defeat the Shulker Mimic, you will need something powerful. This awful monster can be found in the Shulker Tower. And you better pack a water bucket, because upon biting you, it will give you levitation for a few seconds. And due to its shell, arrows won't penetrate it. So you better pack a good weapon and good protection. Only then will you be able to deal with a shulker mimic. Defeating it will grant you a large shulker shell. This ingredient can be used in either making a shulker shield, which gives you a 60% chance of giving enemies levitation if they attack you. Or alternatively, you can craft the shulker helmet, making you immune to the levitation effect. The Chorusling. Chorislings seem like chorus crusted endermen, and they are hostile. They spawn in the outer end islands and immediately attack you if you get too close. And they are pretty hardy, they will take a few hits to defeat. But upon slaying them, you will get an infested chorus fruit. Do not eat, because if you do, you get the chorus infection, just like when these monsters attack you. It will make you randomly teleport around. Not a thing to be trifled with, especially near edges. However, using the infected chorus fruit, you can craft either the chorus mask or craft the Chorus Blade. The Chorus Mask makes you immune to the affection, while the Chorus Blade is a legendary weapon. By right-clicking, it will make you teleport around randomly, pretty useful for dodging attacks. However, both the Mask and the Blade still need one thing, and there's only one way to get it. The Ender Scent. And that way is to fight the last legendary monster, the Ender Scent. This giant Enderman-like creature can be found in the ancient tower remains. And this legendary monster does not mess around. Not only will their hits give you the Chorus Infection, making you randomly teleport around, no, they themselves will also teleport around, dodging your attacks. If you're well equipped enough and stay determined and give it your all, you can defeat the Ender Scent and you will be rewarded with a Chorus Crystal. This is the last missing piece to craft either the Chorus Mask or the Chorus Blade. And with that, you have slain all legendary monsters. For now, final thoughts. Legendary Monsters is such an awesome mod that adds just amazing looking bosses to the game. I can see with a little bit more polish in the future, some additional bosses and resources, this mod could become a staple in adventure mod packs. Download it with the first link in the description below and watch this video next because YouTube thinks you'll enjoy it. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.